Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. When do you have to make choices? Yeah. It says you have to make choices all the time. Even if you don't make a choice, you're still making a choice. Yes. <laughs> to choose not to make a choice is, in Still. some respect, to choose something. It's, it's to choose to let something else call the shots, right? Um, there's a band, Rush, that actually like worked that into their song called Free Will, right? Uh, and they were actually just taking stuff right from Sartre. Um, you always choose throughout your life. So choice is, is ongoing, let's say. Let's get more determinate. When do you actually have to make choices that, that, that matter to you? It's always in some sort of situation, right? Yeah? OK, so there's some sort of good, some sort of value that motivates you. <clears throat> do you have to choose when um, there's only one possibility? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah you do? Choice. Because you can choose to not take that choice, right? Unless you can't. Then there's two possibilities, all right? If, the, if, if it's totally out of your hands and it's going to go the way it's going to go, you, there's no choice. So anytime that there's choice involved, there's different directions that you know, it might be just two, it could be a whole bunch. What are you going to ask, per se? Well, I was just confused by what you meant by like one, like one possibility, either you can do it or you don't. That's what that's, mm. I, I was thinking. Yeah, if there's, if there's one thing that you could do, you could also not do it, right? Or you can do it halfway, or you know, who knows? Do it, do it with a bad attitude. That would be a different choice, actually, for, from from a Sartre perspective. Um, now, how do you actually decide what to to do? This goes to that question that I asked earlier about what resources do you have for moral decision making? Um, what are some of the resources that you have relied on in, in your life? None of you have been carrying around Aristotle, right? And opening up the, yeah. For example, my parents are Examples of, yeah, parents, older family members. There might, you might expand that to um, people in certain social roles, you know, in our society, yeah. Religion. <clears throat> Religion for a lot of people provides a pretty coherent system for, for figuring these sorts of things out. Sometimes with, you know, clear prescriptions, don't do this or you have to do this. What else? What are other things? Yeah. Uh, like moral ethics that our parents and societies and so on. Like principles that you know don't steal things. Now you could have gotten that from parents. You could have gotten that from a religious source. Because you know commandment against stealing. A lot of other places where it says don't steal. You know in the Bible too. If you dig around. Um, yeah. So say like the law. Like the the laws in your society. society? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if the laws are set up well, they're supposed to actually make better people out of us, or at least keep us from becoming really bad people. Um, there's only so much you can do with it. Martin Luther King got this famous statement where he says something along the lines of, um, the law cannot make a man love me, but it can sure keep him from killing me. And that's not nothing. That's something worth the law doing. Um, so yeah. Now, why do these matter? Do they make us choose the things that we do? Do they are they infallible guides? Um, some of the you know people we're going to look at this semester would say, yeah, in some cases they could be. Um, Sartre doesn't think they are. This is he thinks that it ultimately comes down to your choice. So think about this example that he has of the young man. Maybe you had a, a little bit of trouble relating to it because it's such a different situation. But I think you've been in some 
difficult dilemmas yourself, right? This young man is in occupied France. The Nazis have come in, taken over. They're doing horrible things all over the place to people. And this guy really loves his mom. And he is staying with her. She's not doing too well. And he's the one who's, who's there to take care of her. And she, she's really attached to him. So if he leaves, it's almost like giving her a death sentence. Right? On the other hand, the Nazis are occupying his country. And they are pretty bad. You know, they're, they're doing horrible things to people visibly out in the streets. <clears throat> he has a chance to go do something about that. He could join the resistance and, you know, maybe end up in the Free French uh, um, forces and come back and liberate France. These are both good things to do, aren't they? And this young man comes, according to Sartre, he may have made this up, but a um, young man comes to Sartre and says, what should I do? And Sartre says, yeah, this is, this is really a problem. Um, what would you rely on to make that sort of choice? He says, well, if you consult the Christian religion, <clears throat> it doesn't actually tell you which, which thing you should pick. I mean, you could probably find, depending on, on um, how you're interpreting you know, your, the, the religion, Maybe it's a matter of finding the right Bible verses. Have you ever like gone through and, and you can find Bible verses seemingly for and seemingly against, and, that, and then it really doesn't solve the problem for you? <clears throat> um, what about religious authority? You know, if you choose one authority, you might get one answer. Choose another authority, you might get another answer. This is not the sort of thing that's really easy to figure out. What about if you say, well, you know, Christianity is all about love, so do the loving thing. Well, is that to stay with your mom, or is that to love the other people in your country? Which one takes priority? Sartre says the only thing that can decide that is your choice. Nothing else can tell you what, what the right thing to do is. What if you consulted a book of ethics? Like you read Kant, or you read Aristotle, or John Stuart Mill. Uh, there are definitely some things where they disagree. We're going to look at that this semester. Um, well, who's making you follow Kant's guidelines or Aristotle's guidelines? You, right? Your choice, again, if you go with Kant instead of Mill or you go with, say, Jean-Paul Sartre instead of Aristotle, you're the one making that choice, again. Um, and it doesn't do you any good to say, well, Kant's right, so that's why I'm going with him. Because according to Sartre, the reason why Kant is right is because you're choosing for him to be right about ethics. Um, are there any other things that you could, you could rely on? Um, examples. Well, you know, examples are kind of tough to use too, aren't they? Because you, you're never quite sure exactly what this person would do in this novel circumstance. Um, not, not a view that I actually hold myself on, but this is what Sartre says. Uh, I, I think sometimes you could figure that, that thing out. What about your feelings? Do you ever rely on your feelings for making moral decisions? I know I do. Do you guys? Oh, one second. Um, how many of you ever like have done something and then you felt what we call pangs of conscious, conscience? You did something bad and then you felt regret. Okay, maybe you could rely on that, right? Or do you ever feel affection or love towards people and that makes you want to do the right thing by them even though you don't really feel like doing the right thing? Does it sometimes guide you into figuring out what the right thing is? Now, Sartre would say, you're responsible for that emotion. You choose to follow that. Who are you going to? Go ahead. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but there's like a thought of stuff going on in my mind. Like, I don't know. So you're choosing someone else's. So the choices you make aren't really yours because you're choosing someone else's choice? Well, no, they are your choice. Um, you're, think about it as like a, a whole table full of, uh, like at a buffet, right? You've got your Kant plates and your Aristotle plates and your Bible verse plates and mom and dad plates and conscience plates. And you walk through and they're all pretty attractive. And they probably all would, you know, fill you up unless it turns out you have allergies to some of these, these things. But you're the one who actually gets to pick them. And so maybe today it's, it's all uh, Aristotle. And you're going to go with 
him. You're the one who chose that. Um, and there's no, there's no thing coercing that choice, making you do that. You could say, well, Aristotle made me choose Aristotle. So I would say, that's completely circular. At bottom, it's you. Or, I like Aristotle. Well, you choose to make liking the criterion by which you settle these, these things. Um, so Sartre will say, ultimately, it's all up to our uh, individual choice. Um, and now, <clears throat> does that choice have any criterion outside of itself? No. As a matter of fact, he says, you make things good by deciding for them to be the good. So all of you, think about this um, as, as an example. You're all here in a college classroom. You could be in a lot of other places, right? You could have joined the military. Um, you could be working right now. You could be a criminal. Um, you could um, just be like sitting at home in somebody's basement, um, taking it easy. But you chose to come here and apply yourself, and you've made it through you know, two years, maybe two and a half years, um, or those of you who are seniors, three years, um, you put in all these, this work, you decided that that was a fundamental good for you. You may have had parents telling you, oh, you have to go to school. Or you may have had people threatening you with consequences. If you don't go to school, then you're gonna be you know, you're going to have a hard time in the workplace. But obviously that doesn't compel everybody, does it? Because there's some people that are just sitting in a couch in the basement watching TV right now who are your age, who aren't holding down a job, aren't making anything of themselves, and um, they've been able to make that choice. So clearly those consequences by themselves don't necessarily make people do anything. It's you choosing to be what you're going to be. You making of yourself a project, you determining, again, what your essence is going to be. And Sartre, this, we're not actually going to get into this very deeply, Sartre says that when you do that, you're not just deciding for yourself, you're deciding what human being ought to be like. Um, I'm not sure that he can actually get, get away with that. I, I think that maybe once you pull the bottom out and it's all a matter of individual choice and there's no criteria for that choice, there may be some, some difficulties in justifying that, but we, we can talk about that some, some other time.